So I briefly wanted to go over the RPG template in the new update for Easy Template Kit. Um, so basically we have three different classes. Now the reason I highlight classes is because we have one player prefab. So selecting, um, you know, Warrior for example will change a bool on the player character object um, to activate its class and everything is based on these bools. The reason I did this is because one, it will be a lot easier to expand the system. So have 10 classes, for example, if you wanted to. Um, two, it will make it a lot easier with actions as well. If it's just one actual, you know, it's always the same player object. Um, and selecting different uh, classes will change the model according to, um, you know, what is displayed. Again, this will make it just a lot easier. Uh, same if you want to use your own models, which I hope, really hope you do. Um, so yeah, it, it just makes it easier uh, overall to manage the system by everything being, um, you know, based on the bulls on the player object. So selecting um, a class will activate a bool and that bool will then, um, uh, you know, activate everything else accordingly. So as you can see, we are using melee here. We have our stance, we have our weapons, and this is activated based on the bull. The same happens for which abilities are displayed here. Um, these are uh, activated based on the bull as well. So I wanted to go over everything we have in our HUD here. So first off, we have our minimap, um, which is pretty much the same as in the default easy template kit, except for the fact that it no longer rotates with the player. Um, the reason I did this is because, um, well, it actually works like that most of the time in RPGs, the minimap doesn't actually rotate. Um, not always, sometimes it does. Uh, we can expand as well and we get a bigger view. Um, but you know, I definitely suggest using a uh, more elaborate uh, map system if you want to expand on these features because obviously there will always be limits to what you can do without a um, more developed map template system. So um, outside of that we have uh, our model here and again this is just displayed based on what you select in the character uh, select uh, in the beginning. We have our level so based on our experience we have our health bar and we have our mana bar. Now the way mana works is, you know, you hit an enemy and it fills up for the warrior. And if it's uh, filled up enough, you can use your right mouse abilities, just like Diablo. For mage and hunter, it works slightly differently. So the mana bar by default already builds up. Um, and again, just, you know, hitting enemies will fill it up more. It's because they are more reliant on those right mouse abilities than the warrior is. Um, for the warrior, it's just a really powerful additional attack. Um, but his default, you know, by default, he's already quite powerful. So, uh, talking about that, when we open up our inventory, um, I added all of these just for testing purposes. So, you know, by default, uh, the action will be disabled to have these on start. Um, but I wanted to show how all of this works. So we have our stats here. And these stats basically influence, um, you know, certain uh, attributes of the player. So strength uh, influences the damage you output. Um, so the higher the strength, the higher the damage. Uh, dexterity influences character movement speed, um, wisdom, well, mana, obviously. And vitality, uh, health. So all of these actually have, um, you know, direct impact as well. Uh, the same goes for if you equip armor. So uh, look at the stats. If I equip this armor and uh, you'll see dexterity go down and other stats go up. So vitality goes up. I think strength as well. I'm not sure. Oh uh, no, strength doesn't. Um, but yeah, vitality goes up, but we, um, you know, we lose some, uh, some dexterity. So we lose some movement speed. If I equip the hat, for example, um, we'll see vitality go up again a bit more. Now the way weapons work is we only have one default um, player uh, melee weapon from the melee module. And all of these just change the stats and the models of the weapons. 
Now the reason I did this is because that's how it actually works in most RPGs, especially loot RPGs like uh, Diablo, uh, Skyrim. You know, equipping a different uh, sword, you know, than a default sword will not change the actual um, melee animations. Um, I know for Skyrim, depending on the class, it does obviously. So if you have, um, you know, if you have axes, there will be different animations. Uh, which, you know, you can obviously uh, add a different uh, melee weapon for, from the melee module. Um, but, you know, a different sword of a different class will just be, you know, have different stats and that's it. Um, same with Diablo, you know, it doesn't actually change any animations depending on the weapon you drop in on the player. All of those will remain the same. So um, that's really what happens here. So it's just different models with different stats um, that change when you equip them. And that makes it incredibly easy to expand on this, you know, add a lot of weapons um, because it takes a lot of less time to set up. And, you know, that's actually how it works in these types of games. So it's also staying true to what they actually do. So next up we have skills. Now the way this works is we have our bar here with our skills and pressing one will activate this skill. So I can, you know, I can actually do that right now. Um, so this is a buff for the player, more damage. And um, this is an attack. And these uh, are executed. So when I actually press um, one or I press two. So when it stops, by the way, this highlights that uh, the skill is not ready yet so pressing one again I uh, will not doing anything um, so when you actually press two it will execute the actions of a variable now the reason I did this is because it will make it a lot easier to add a lot of skills um, so I didn't do that because you know that's the whole point it's a template so you're supposed to do that yourself um, but I added one just to demonstrate how it works so when I press on this skill it will basically drop in a different variable object. So now when I press one, my health will actually get a boost instead of damage. So all of that is just variable based. So clicking these icons just changes the active variable and pressing one executes the actions on a variable. So it doesn't execute the actions to buff by default. It executes the actions of the variable itself. So again, makes it really easy to expand on this system. Um, we have quests as well. There's no active quest right now, so I'll show how that works in a bit. Um, and we have our settings, which does actually pause the game. Um, and it's really simple, resume, save, load. I mean, there's you know, not much to it. Um, so yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's how the HUD works. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll show a bit more of these uh, features as we go along. Now, highlighting an enemy, as you can see, um, it changes his, uh, his look. Now, if you have, um, you know, a different shader, I definitely suggest uh, using a different uh, shader for this. Killing him will um, activate an animation for death rather than ragdoll. And the reason I did this is because I don't want these to be objects um, you can trip over. So, you know, they need to be... Uh, um, yeah, they basically just need to be uh, lying there and you can walk over them. These are corpses just like in Diablo which basically contain loot. So if I press on them they could drop loot. Uh, all loot is randomized so depending on um, your class you will get different loot. I know Diablo doesn't do that so you could get items that do not belong to your class. I, I didn't find that logical. Uh, again, you don't have to do that. You can just drag in the same loot table for all of them if you want to. Um, but yeah, for me, that didn't make a lot of sense. So, um, again, everything drops random loot except for chests. So, chests uh, drop predefined loot. Um, and, you know, we have a couple of enemies, so let's kill them first. And as you can see, you know, the default, uh, there's quite some uh, sway to it. Um, I know these feet are still moving, I'll, I'll check what that is. Um, so pressing on the chest will drop some, uh, some gold. Um, and again, you can change all of that as well. So I have a different loot table for it. Um, so yeah, you know, 
we have our different abilities of course um, which are stronger um, so they deal more damage um, they are still still based on the same um, uh, you know damage uh, value obviously because uh, otherwise it wouldn't be fun so I'm gonna walk a bit here and then I'm going to press this one um, which is our strongest ability but you know it takes a bit of time to recharge and that missed okay that's interesting anyway let's kill them all off and we level up as well so now we're level two we have a bit more xp i'll uh, check these corpses if they drop some uh, loot and this one actually drops some loot as well and again i want to highlight that these loot tables you know you can customize them yourself to whatever you want uh, increased drop chances it's all based on list variables so it's really easy to do so now when i uh, go here we'll see these quest givers and if I expand the map a bit, we'll see that there's a shop here as well. Um, and we have our quest giver here. Um, so yeah, okay, I'll click on him. Uh, again, this model, um, this is using dialogue. Um, and the model of the player is again decided based on uh, the bulls uh, of the classes we select. So if you have a mage, you'll see a different model in dialogue as well. Um, so yay. Okay, let's skip. So we get this uh, quest started and we get um, these details. This might be a bit small depending on uh, on how you're seeing it. It's fine for me, but you, know, you can change that. Um, so yeah, we uh, we activated our quest. Now if I go here, um, you know, we, uh, we see all of this as well. Again, um, you know, obviously you can change all of the, the look of uh, everything here. You know, it's not supposed to be the final look for your game um, so we have a shop here as well so we have our uh, a shopkeeper um, and he uh, he you know sells some stuff we can buy some stuff and yay cool so yeah that's how it works I'll, uh, I'll actually sell two swords and we can uh, we can buy some health potions well, maybe those are a bit cheap by default so if I go to inventory and I uh, activate a potion, you saw those pluses and our health uh, goes back. So we have more health, yay. Um, what I'm going to do as well is uh, I'll just, you know, drag this in because it's fun for him to look, uh, to look slightly different. Um, yeah, the, the small effect you see here is from uh, post-processing, the sort of like, um, you know, fade behind them. Which is obviously, you know, it's just post-processing, it's optional. Some gold. Now the drop chance for gold is higher than it is for weapons or uh, anything like that, um, obviously. You know, you uh, there will be a bigger chance of dropping gold than there is a chance of dropping armor. Still, might be a bit too high for actually dropping useful stuff, but you know, that's up to you. Oh, I missed there. It's a good thing I actually bought those potions because I'm not doing that well. So we have our active uh, quest, so we're going to go through all of this um, walk here. Uh, the minimap also shows how big this actually is, so it's uh, you know it's not that big. It's a small area, uh, but big enough to demonstrate how all of this works. And yeah, let's. I'm not going to pick everything up, but you know, just to show you how all of this actually functions. And we have our, um, well, as you can see, we have a, a big guy here as well, um, who is uh, going to be a bit stronger. Um, we kill him, which basically, uh, you know, finishes the quest, quest completed. We saw that in the screen. Um, but as you can see, we can still play, so it's not hindering actual gameplay. 
Um, so yeah, and uh, that's how all of this works. So when we go to a quest now, there's no active quest. Uh, if you want to have a different log here that displays everything, you know, that's just how the quest module works. So you can do that. Um, and we're level three now because we get more XP from killing uh, our big guy here. And yeah, now again for the big guy, um, you know, he was uh, displaying armor. Um, that armor is uh, just attached on runtime, so the same happens for our. Um, oh, we still have some enemies here. Let's try to see if I can get two at a time. Three at a time, perfect. Um, so the same happens for our um, NPC characters as well. It all happens at runtime. And the reason I did this is because you can then easily change uh, the way it works. Even if you drop in a different uh, model, it won't affect the actual attachment of weapons. Um, so if I go to a shopkeeper, you know, you know, his head gets attached on, uh, on runtime. Um, and the same happens for our NPCs here, so our two soldiers and our uh, commander. So uh, in runtime, uh, these armors get attached and the weapons get attached and the post get selected. So again, makes it really easy for you to change all of that to your own models, to your own uh, weapons. So yeah, just wanted to go over how all of this works. Obviously, different classes, different abilities, um, but the functionality is all uh, still the same. So this is using um, the stats module, shooter module, um, what else is it using? The quest module, inventory module, and dialogue module. So it's using everything basically except for traversal, which doesn't make any sense with this type of game. So thanks for watching.